Hello students, welcome to an academy, India's largest learning platform. I am Abhishek Datta. I did my graduation from IIT Roorkee and my MBA from IIM Indore. So in the previous video, we had delved into the topic of the quantum model of an atom. In this video, we will study it in detail now and we'll also learn what are orbitals and what are the three principal quantum numbers. Okay, so let's begin this video. Hello students. Welcome to an academy once again. This video is about the quantum numbers as well as what do we mean by orbitals. Quantum numbers we had defined them. The three quantum numbers together define the energy state of an electron. So we'll learn more about them in this video. I'm Abhishek Datta. You already know about me. So let's begin this. We'll be taking up five topics of discussion. Firstly, I will introduce you to the topic of orbitals. This is different from an orbit. Then we'll see the three which are the principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number and the magnetic orbital quantum number. These are the three quantum numbers which we had earlier introduced to, right? And finally, we'll look at the fourth quantum number, which is the electronic spin as well. So let's begin with our discussion of the orbitals. So what is an orbital and how is it different from an orbit? So the orbital is the region or space around the nucleus where the probability of finding an electron is maximum and this is called orbital. So probability of finding an electron has to be maximum and that region will be called by the name orbital. This is a simple definition of orbital. Now a large number of orbitals are possi possible in an atom. There can be various regions, different regions where the possibility of finding an electron is the maximum, right? Those orbitals, they are large in number in an atom. So qualitatively, these orbitals can be distinguished by their size, shape and orientation. They can have different sizes, different shapes and as well as different orientations. But all of them have one similar quality, which is the probability of finding the electron is maximum in them. An orbital of smaller size means there is more chance of finding the electron near the nucleus. So if it is a small size, a small volume, you are for sure that the electron is inside that orbital. Hence, the possibility of finding an electron at a specific spot will be more inside a smaller sized orbital. Right, guys? Then, similarly, the shape and orientation mean that there is more probability of finding the electron along certain directions than other directions. So, orbitals might have a different shape and it can have a different orientation. And what did we define the orbital to be? It has the maximum probability of finding an electron. Hence, along that shape and along that orientation, you will have the maximum probability of finding the electron, right? So all the three, the size, the shape and the orientation, they will define how an orbital is. Atomic orbitals are precisely distinguished by what are known as quantum numbers. Okay, so each orbital is designated by three quantum numbers, which we studied. They are the principal quantum number L, azimuthal, L and ML as well, right? So let us look at one of them, one by one, all of them, one by one. So the first one is the principal quantum number, which is denoted by the letter small n. The principal quantum number n is the positive integer with values from 1 to up till infinity, right? It, it can take only values which are positive and integers. So what is a principal quantum number? It is nothing but the orbit number. So it identifies the shell. A shell is nothing but an orbit and it determines the sizes as well as the energies of the orbits. Right guys, so as we said in one of the previous video, if you have the uh, orbit number, you can find out the radii of the orbit as well as the energy of that orbit, energy of an electron in that orbit. So it identifies the shell. Size of an orbital increases with the increase of principal quantum number n. Right guys, so as we increase the principal quantum number, the size increases. In other words, the electron will be located away from the nuclei. Right guys, then we have that the energy of the orbital will increase with the increase in n. As we move higher in the principal quantum number n, the energy of that quantum, um, the energy of that orbital, it will keep on increasing guys, as we saw previously. The principal quantum number also identifies the shell. So the quantum number n, that is nothing but the orbit number. Orbit is different from the orbital. So orbit is nothing but shell. 
so n and orbit number and shell number they are one and the same thing and shells they are denoted by the letters as well for example if you have this n capital which is this n over here right it can be 1 2 3 4 for example then you can denote it by shell numbers as well so shell numbers can be k l m n and as i said over here and one if the n is equals to 1 the shell will be called k shell similarly for n equals to 2 it's known by l shell and so on k l m n n shells now we have that the total number of orbitals in a shell is n square and the maximum number of electrons will be 2n square right guys so with the increase in the value of n the number of allowed orbital increases and are given by n square as he said over here the number of orbitals inside a subshell is given by the number n square every orbital can have two electrons each hence maximum number of electrons is 2n square now if we have the number of orbitals to be n square and we know each orbital can contain only two maximum electrons hence the total number of electrons will be 2n square right guys so we have the capital n which is the uh, shell number over here right which is also denoted using these letters k l m n and so on then we have the total number of orbitals in a shell that is given by n square okay and the maximum number of electrons is 2n square so let's move on guys to the second quantum number which is the azimuthal quantum number denoted by the letter l now the azimuthal quantum number l is also known as the orbital quantum angular momentum right so this is known by the name orbital angular momentum or subsidiary quantum number it defines three dimensional space of the orbital so each orbital will have certain kind of a shape and this number l over here it will denote what kind of a 3d shape this orbital will have this is the significance of azimuthal quantum number l so for a given value of n l cap l can have n values ranging from 0 to n minus 1 let us take up an example so when n equals to 1 it will range from 0 to n minus 1 n minus 1 over here is 0 so it is from 0 to 0 hence value of l will only be 0 but for n equals to 2 it will range from 0 to n minus 1 which is 2 minus 1 which is 1 so 0 and 1 these are the two values right guys similarly for n equals to 3 it will be from 0 to n minus 1 n minus 1 in this case is 2 so from 0 1 and 2 these are the three values for n equals to 3 so these are the values which l can take and for a given value of n the possible values of l are 0 1 up till n minus 1 as we saw over here in these examples and each value of l over here guys so value of l can be 0 1 2 and so on each value of this l will refer to a particular subshell subshells are denoted by s p d f and g and so forth so do not get confused between shells and subshells shells are denoted by k l m n and subshells are denoted by s p d f g and so on and uh, the value of l will give us the notation for the subshell okay so this notation will depend on the value of l if l is 0 we have the notation s for l equals to 1 we have 1 respectively over here so this is how we go on with the series right guys hence there are n subshells for principal quantum number n so if you take any orbit over here say suppose n equals to 1 how many subshells will that shell have guys it will have n number of subshells so if you are in the third orbit n equals to 3 you will have three subshells so there is on the major broad perspective there is one shell which contains subshell and each subshell will have different orbitals right guys and the subshells are denoted by 1s 2s 2p 3s and so on so this is a representation of how the subshells are denoted say suppose we have n equals to 1 right guys so what are the different possible values of l we saw the values of l can be 0 to n minus 1 hence only one value was observed and this is denoted by 1s the one in the 1s is coming from over here and the s is coming from here right guys so l equals to 0 over here we have s and n equals to 1 simply we write 1 over here on the right side let us take up n equals to 2 now for n equals to 2 we saw there are two values of l possible 0 and 1 so we write it over here now what does 2 and 0 mean it means we are in the second shell and 0 is the subshell so we are second shell and s is the 
सब चलो भैया सो टू एस इज रेजिटन लाइक दिस सिमिलरली फॉर ओ भैया वी राइटेड एस टू पी बिकॉज वन डिनोट्स पी सो दिस इज हाउ यू गो ऑन गाइस विद द एन इक्वल्स टू थ्री एंड एन इक्वल्स टू फोर एज वेल लेट्स मूव आउट टू द नेक्स्ट क्वांटम नंबर विच इज द मैग्नेटिक ऑर्बिटल क्वांटम नंबर एम एल इट गिवस अस द इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द स्पेशल ओरिएंटेशन ऑफ द ऑर्बिटल विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द स्टैंडर्ड सेट ऑफ कॉर्डिनेट एक्सेस so now we know the shape of the orbital we can find out the orbit orientation of the orbital right guys and for any subshell which is defined by l as we saw previously 2 l plus 1 values of ml are possible so these are the values of ml now if you have l equals to 1 say suppose so what you do is write 0 over here and you have to write l values left of 0 and l values right of 0 right for let us take up the example of l equals to 2 in this case So you write zero first, and then you write two because this is two. You write two values over here, and you write two values over here, and this is how you get l values, l values, and plus one over here, and that is why two l plus one are the possible range of m. So for each l, there are two l plus one values of m l. This is how you arrive it. So each orbital in an atom is therefore defined in by a set of values n, l, and m l. So we are done with n. L and ML. These three values we have learned till now. So if you read this table over here, the value of L can be zero, which is denoted by S, right? One is denoted by P, and the number of orbitals can be found out using this number over here, right, guys? So let us take up an example over here. So n is equal to two. We are on the second orbit or the second shell. What is the subshell, guys? It is L equals to one. L equals to one means it is a P subshell. And m equals to one is one of the orbit orbitals, right? So this p, uh, if you see this over here, this p subshell over here, it will have three orbitals, right? What are the three orbitals denoted by? It is denoted by minus one, zero, and plus one. So m equals to zero is one of the orbital within the p subshell. So this is why these three numbers will give us the p subshell, and this is denoted by two p. Two is coming from here. P is coming from this, right? So this is how we denote. So let's move on, guys, to the fourth electron spin, which is denoted by S. This is the fourth quantum number, guys. So till now we have studied the three, and three were sufficient. But then there were more spectral lines observed in the spectra of hydrogen, guys, and more experiments were done, and therefore there was a need for a fourth quantum number, which is the electronic spin. This is the most simple quantum number, guys. So an electronic spin. Will define the spin of the electron, guys. So, what do we mean by the spin? Let us read. An electron spins around its own axis in a similar way as the Earth spins around its own axis. So, it can be a clockwise spin as well as an anti-clockwise spin. So, electron spin refers to orientation of the spin of the electron. It can have two values, plus half and minus half. And these are called the two spin states of the electron and are normally represented by two arrows: spin up, which is the plus half, and spin down, which is The minus half. Okay, so upside arrow and downside arrow, which denotes plus half and minus half respectively. Plus half denotes clockwise spin, and minus half denotes the anti-clockwise spin over here. And an orbital cannot hold more than two electrons, and these two electrons should have opposite spins. So as I said, inside an orbital, you can have a maximum of two electrons, which should have the opposite spins over here. So if one is one spin is plus half, the other spin is automatically minus half. Okay, so Let us summarize quickly what all we learned. We learned about the definition of orbital. So the region of the space with the maximum probability of finding an electron, that region inside an atom is known by the name orbital. And there are three quantum numbers. So the first one is the principal quantum number n. It denotes the shell number. This is the very basic orbit number. Then we have the azimuthal quantum number l, which denotes the subshell. We have the shell number from here. L will give us the subshell. right this is also known by the name orbital angular momentum or the subsidiary quantum number and it defines the three dimensional shape of the orbital right guys then we have the magnetic orbital quantum number ml now from this we from this we get spdf and from ml we get which orbital we are referring to and finally we learned about the electronic spin as well i suggest you please revise all this concepts as this is on a difficult side right so you'll get a hang of it if you go through it once again with this we reach at the end of the video thank you guys for listening to me in the next session we'll take up the topic of shapes of or atomic orbitals 
as always you can follow me over here if you love watching my videos thank you take care and bye bye